الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وآله وأزواجه وذريته أجمعين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا التباء وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا الجنابة اللهم أرنا حقائق الأشياء كما هي اللهم أرنا حقائق الأشياء كما هي اللهم رب زدنا علما اللهم رب زدنا علما وعملا وإخلاصا يا رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وآله وأزواجه وذريته أجمعين أوكي اللهم آمين أوكي so we had stopped here in short yeah all this uh, we're starting from here in short in short can't view is that without the presence of without the presence of pure concept there can be no claim of objective validity It's not that objectively valid judgments must mention such concept or category. Indeed, this seldom occurs. The point is that they must use it. For example, the sun warms uh, the sun warms the stone, which is a paradigmat paradigmatic Kant judgment, makes a causal claim and as such appeals to the concept or schema of causation, though it is not mentioned in the judgment. Nor is this the only category involved in the judgment. For example, the stone is viewed as an entity that is altered in the process. That is a substance. So, yeah, you're using cause, the concept of cause here and the concept of substance here. As warming involves a change in qualities uh, or intensive uh, magnitude, or etc. So, quality is a concept. In here. So, the basic claim here is. Uh, so, the basic claim is. Only Kantian, Kantian, Kant judgments are objectively valid. And even though, as we have seen, every judgment, including Hume judgments, must use concepts. The three elements we uh, mentioned last time. But the thing is, what differentiates uh, Kant judgment from Hume judgment, or what is their specific difference? Is that the judgment uh, Kant judgment use pure concepts? use with <coughs> uh, pure concepts uh, on the other hand Hume judgment use empirical concepts or and logical concepts and the basic difference between empirical concepts and pure concepts is Empirical concepts are derived from experience. On the other hand, pure concepts are, in a sense, prior to experience. And the difference between um, pure concepts and uh, logical concepts is that so 
So logical concepts resemble pure concept in that they are not derived from experience as such, both of them. But lo logical concepts lack the connection to reality. They are pure forms. On the other hand, pure concept on the one hand, they are pure forms, but they also have a connection to reality. So that's why logical concepts don't claim objectivity in that sense or truth claims. On the other hand, pure concepts involve truth claims. They are applied to the real world. Um, okay. And, and the distinction between use and mention is obvious. Uh, if someone doesn't know, then they can just search it or we'll make a video separately on that. Um, in order to understand this central Kantian doctrine, you need to examine the relationship between the notion of objective validity, consciousness in general and categories. Yeah. Now, as we saw last time, Kant's conception of knowledge involved three things. Number one, information or content, and that's provided by our senses. Number two is synthesis or form, so categorizing these experiences or this information. And that involves concepts. And number three, a self or consciousness or an actor or subject which does this synthesis. So synthesis. Obviously, synthesis at certain level is automatic, but at the end of the day, you need an active subject to synthesize the whole thing and make a judgment. So you can't, uh, judgment involves, uh, in that sense for Kant, judgment involves, con conceptually judgment involves, I mean, judgment can be implicit, explicit, but judgment uh, in its essence or in its conception involves freedom for thought and capability to act uh, and that's the conception of subject or self uh, and so um, so any con conception of knowledge and knowledge involved judgment involve these three things content concepts and consciousness whether they are empirical judgment human judgments current judgment they all involve these things and what distinguishes human Kant judgment and human judgment uh, is this, ultimately this. In human judgment, only empirical self or logical or both is involved. On the other hand, in Kant's judgment, uh, what is involved is uh, consciousness in general or pure self or transcendental self. And that's what gives uh, Kantian concepts their purity. So this transcendental self doesn't involve, I mean, doesn't drive its concept from the empirical uh, experience, but it provides, uh, it, it sort of generates those concepts from within. Uh, and then apply it. So, uh, apply it to experience. So without them, 
Kant's claim would be that the empirical concept actually presupposes the pure concept and not the other way around. And, and the argument for that would be a transcendental argument, a typical Kantian argument, and then there's a whole debate about how to understand transcendental argument. But I think I think uh, that's a good point to stop. And next time, inshallah, we'll uh, start from looking at uh, looking at here uh, the connection between objective validity, objective validity. So we'll start next time, inshallah, connection between objective. Uh, consciousness in general and categories. Categories are concepts um, and the difference between categories and concepts in Kant is that uh, concepts can be you know purely formal but categories are not formal they are applied to the real world of the real experience. Okay, so we'll start from here, inshallah.